Let's recap the pillars of object orientation. So first we learned about abstraction. It means we try to abstract behavior of objects with similar behavior into joint interfaces or blueprints. Those are called classes. So basically we take our real world and create an abstraction by bundling objects that are similar together, right? So next concept was encapsulation. So in, with the encapsulation, we try to hide implementation details. What are implementation details? Well, data members, for example, are typical details that nobody needs to know and nobody should manipulate them except the class methods. Therefore, often we find all data members to be private and only the public interface is provided with the methods. So what we now discuss in the following of today's lecture is inheritance, which means we, we will are able that a child object or a child blueprint of a class is able to reuse the interface and implementation of a parent, but changes the behavior slightly extending it. And also you like to express relationships between the objects. There is a relationship, for example, like a student is a person. And lastly, we talk about polymorphism in the future, which is that we know that an object can fit the interfaces of different types. So it can behave, a cake can behave like a cake, a cake can also behave like a chemical compound that is used to build something else, in this case, an organism that is fit with it. So going back to our inheritance. So we know that inheritance may lead to complex hierarchies. Here we see vehicles motorized vehicles, motorbike, car, family car, and so on. A family car is a car, and a car is a motorized vehicle. A motorized vehicle is a vehicle. Um, so in such hierarchies, we have a generalization on the top. So the top of is more general. So a vehicle is more general than a family car or a bicycle, of course, which are specializations. And we are also often talking about ancestors. So a vehicle is an ancestor of a car and descendants. So a vehicle has as a descendants, for example, a sports car. But also the car is an ancestor of sports car, which is a descendant of car. In terms of UML, let's talk about inheritance. We have a vehicle and we have a motorized vehicle as like we said here, a specialization or as a descendant. And in UML, it, we talk about such a direct relationship between a parent and uh, a child uh, as inheritance using the is a relationship. So we, in terms of speak, we're saying a motorized vehicle is a vehicle. Yeah. So this has to be differentiated from aggregation. Aggregation means we pull things together. So something is owned by something else. Like a motorized vehicle has an engine. So the engine is basically a part of a motorized vehicle. That typically means an engine is a data member. Yeah, an engine is not a motorized vehicle. So you can't say that. So it's not inheritance, but it is aggregation that needs to be differentiated. So what can a class reuse? It can reuse the interface of a parent and the implementation. And of course, all the existing data members, they are part of an implementation of the parent. You can express relationships between objects using inheritance. And how we do this in C++ is that, in terms of syntax, is that in the declaration of a class, we have a class like student. Then we specify after the colon, the visibility, which can be public, private, or protected again, and the superclass, which is like parent. So in our example cake, we could have, say we have a class long cake, which uses public inheritance from a cake. What could be a long cake? Well, a long cake can be one that has, you know, it's a bigger cake, so it has 12 slices instead of our default of eight. Also, maybe we want, in for an exercise, say that we have a cake and, and as a cake we want to specify the icing type so we call this cake icing cake okay and we want to specify the icing on the icing cake 
So how can we do this with an icing cake? Well, here on the left side we see a UML model. We have an icing cake that is a cake. So it's a child class of the superclass cake here. So cake is our ancestor of icing cake. And this icing cake, well, we need as a private data member the icing, which we can store as a string. And then we provide a constructor icing cake, which takes as an argument the type of icing as a string. Yeah, so in terms of our header file, um, we have we take our class cake as it was, and then we take our icing cake that publicly now inherits from cake, and in a public section we add icing cake as the constructor, in a private we add string icing, the type of the icing, right? So code and data can be reused and shared thanks to the inheritance. So it means in this case that the icing case, of course, it has, again, the interface is inherited from cake. So it has eat slice and it has get slice. These functions, these methods of a specific object are provided by icing cake. And additionally, though, it has this specific constructor icing cake that is now different from all the existing interfaces. So we can create an icing cake only by specifying an icing because that is not an optional argument here. So talking now about long cake, which kind of alters the semantics of our previous cake by having 12 slices. So maybe the idea is that we, we want to reuse our i slice variable that exists in cake and just manipulate it in the constructor of long cake, thereby really just changing the behavior and not replicating functionality or data in our new class long cake. So let's have a look how this looks in UML. So we have long cake, long cake has a constructor of course. And now this long cake is a cake, so it inherits from cake all the properties. Now what we need to change is we need to change the visibility of this variable i slices to protected. What does protected mean? Protected allows any child class, in this case long cake, to manipulate variables and also to call functions that are protected. Um, in this case, this long cake constructor shall modify this i slices variable. In terms of our header declaration, this looks as follows, that we have a public section and now we move this in slices from the private section to a new section, protected, and then in long cake we inherit publicly from cake which means we take all the interfaces as they exist and make them expose them again as a public interface. So a, a long cake is a cake, in fact. Now we have to change the behavior of the constructor. That's why we specify it here. So in terms of implementation, what we do is um, we, we only have to re-implement the constructor. We, we actually, a constructor always calls the constructor of the parent class as well. So we can do this explicitly here. We can say long cake calls cake. And after that is done, we know i slices has been set to eight. Now we change it here explicitly to be 12. Yeah. Note that we have here Excel to the data member as it would be part of our class because it is in fact part of our class by inheriting it publicly and by be it being protected or public, we allow it to be accessible. So a public, so this public inheritance means that a public interface remains public and a protected remains protected and so on. And now we made the change. 